everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Globe Interview Series. I'm your host Sunlight and joining me in sunny, sunny Barcelona is the lovely Una. Hello darling. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been? Have you, how have you been finding the summit so far? Yeah, look, I think Barcelona is beautiful and it's really interesting to be at a summit that is predominantly men, predominantly developers and really just be a badass lady there. They kind of get really confused by it. And I think I must be one of the only artists there as well. So it's this interesting paradox of like, well, how do people who are pushing technology also interact with women in art? Not that those are exclusive categories, but I, I found it an interesting experiment. And I'm doing some performance art while we're there and we'll have to see at the end how it goes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Can't yeah. tell just yet. Don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Can you tell me a bit more about your performance piece? Yeah, so basically, I don't know if you've heard about this game, it's called Deal or No Deal. <laughs> it's a really original concept and I'm really challenging the idea of how do we make decisions? How do we know what is a good investment and can you trust your own judgment? So I've got this briefcase which is handcuffed to me throughout the duration of the conference and I'll really be playing with the idea of anonymity and what's inside the briefcase, really challenging this greed meets curiosity. Um, some people have wondered whether it's art. I've said it could be art, it could not be art, it could be empty. I've gotten questions if it's ledgers a thousand times. I don't even know if it might be a ledger, it might be a VHS tape. Um, but it's really fun because it, it's something to kind of talk about and to get people engaged with this notion of art is also performance and art can happen live in an interaction, right? I make video art and digital art, which really just sits on a wall and there's a one-way interaction. People can look at it, but I don't get to hear what they say or see what they say, only if they want to talk shit via Twitter. Um, and this is an opportunity for me to really kind of have that live in the moment. What is the art and what are you making of it? Okay, so what's been the kind of overall reaction so far to to, well, to, to Una. <laughs> yeah, look, great question. Some people fucking love her and others hate her. <laughs> Some people are afraid. Today I had one man who literally told me that he didn't know what to do and he was very afraid. And I was like, all right, I'm just an artist. I don't bite. Um, but that's the kind of joy of being in, uh, being in a male dominant space as one of the only women. And I really get to play with my identity and play with the performance of gender. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a bit more, you know, about you. What mm. is Una? Right, well, Una is raising the floor price on pussy. It's very simple, around the world, raising the floor price on pussy. I'm doing it through NFTs now. It won't always be through NFTs. It will kind of switch around. Um, but I, I think it's important for women to claim space in this arena and not just, you know, um, women who come from the same background as the men who are developing this space, but women who come from all backgrounds. And my, my biggest gripe with this space is that it is one that is truly made by men and mostly for men. And really to kind of change that, we need more voices in there. And so Una is really about <laughs> kind of playing with gender and saying, hey, we're here and you're not going to forget about us. That's why I go to these conferences dressed so loud. And part of like not showing my face and kind of keeping this a nun is that it really makes people wonder, well, where is someone's identity? Is the identity in the body where most people associate women's identity to be? Or is the identity in the face? Or is it in the mind? And it's really, yeah, it's fun to play with it live, especially in, a, in an emerging space. Like, I love the NFT space, don't get me wrong, but like, if you go through a lot of the art that's there, you'll see most of it is of women's bodies. There's a lot of 3D animations of women. There's a lot of collages of women. There's a lot of 3D models of women's bodies. I think they're beautiful. I absolutely love them. But it's a question of ownership, right? And then you look at the artist and it's like, oh, right, what we're seeing is still the same trend that we've seen in the art world forever. Men profiting off nude women. And I'd really like to change that. Yeah. <laughs> women should have some authority over our own bodies or over our figures. And that's part of what Una's doing, you know? Just to get it to the man in some ways. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Thank and also, you. not taking myself too seriously. There's so many yeah. artists in this space, so many devs in this space who think we are God's greatest gift. Obviously, I am God's greatest gift <laughs> to me. <laughs> but so I really just don't believe that we need to take ourselves so seriously. There's much more uh, opportunity that comes with joy and curiosity and uh, 
yeah, liveliness. I say it's a, it's a kindergarten approach or you can f*** off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What so? What inspires you? I know you said you know gender and you know the kind of the almost the politics surrounding it. But um, yeah. So so what what inspires you? Great question. I mean, like I think like any artist, it's really curiosity that drives most of my practice, right? And for instance, like this piece alone, it's curiosity of say, okay, well, if I can sell an NFT, if I can sell digital art. I already know that. Okay, well, can I sell one without revealing what the actual art is? Can I have this game around it? So that's like one instance of how curiosity drives it. But I think uh, if I zoom out a little bit, a more macro um, approach to what, what interests me or what, what drives me is really art is this translation, right? Even my name is a translation of my real name. <laughs> Una's not my real name, don't be fooled. <laughs> um, so it's like, if art is this translation of expression and, and how, you, how you shift an idea from one medium to another, then it's really, okay, well, what can you do with that? How many things can you translate? What ideas can you communicate? I'm very sensitive and therefore very expressive. <laughs> yeah. And I really love the two in the interplay. So like, yes, most of my practice deals with gender, some of it deals with animals and most of it deals with superiority and power and kind of how pleasure and power play together. Amazing, thank you. Hopefully it will change <laughs> yeah. over the years though. Fuck, yeah. if I'm still doing this type of art in like 20 years, we'll know something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Only time will tell. It's true, babe. <laughs> you know, NFTs are a slightly kind of like emerging field, right? So, totally. yeah, so can you tell us a bit more about why NFTs, you know? Surely, like, as a digital artist, a lot of people really didn't take digital art seriously until there was money attached. And obviously, how did the money get attached was the NFTs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone thinks that, oh, it may be an NFT, it must be, like, worth millions. And it's like, no, it's just another way of having a proof of ownership. And that was really important about NFTs for me in general. It's kind of this idea, is like, as a female artist, I'm more than sure that most of my work will not get recognized until I die. So how do I preserve that? Blockchain. That's what's interesting to me about it. And having kind of a resurgence of appetite for digital art is a wonderful thing that NFT has provided, but also like, I'm not going to sit here and just circle jerk NFTs. Like, <laughs> there's a lot wrong with the community and, and there's a lot wrong with the idea of conflating art and NFTs. NFTs will hopefully uh, eclipse art, right? Art is just one utility, but hopefully NFTs will be multiple things far and beyond in the future. And kind of this identity of NFT artist is one that I deeply reject because um, yeah, it diminishes the quality of art to NFTs and it, it helps to create this separation between artists who are using different mediums and artists who are using NFTs. I, I'm an NFT artist that uses multiple mediums <laughs> and I think that there are actually a lot of artists in the space that use multiple mediums and NFTs are one medium or maybe they're not even medium, they're just the, the receipt. So I don't know if you want to call it like a credit card. It's like, how are you paying? How are you getting your money? That's what the NFT is kind of doing and providing and and to conflate that that money and that transaction as the actual art is really, um, yeah, it's something I think the space is missing a bit. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. dumb. <laughs> We're getting it wrong. Yeah. We're selling it wrong. We need new marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's all something within your control, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's why I do anyone, they call me an NFT artist. I'm like, no, it's actually an artist who uses NFTs. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a prioritizing of which, and for me, the art will always take priority. And like I was explaining before, I love Avalanche. I think it's great. I love Ethereum. I think it's great. They both obviously could improve in very obvious ways. Um, but like, I'm not, I'm not here for the blockchains. I love the blockchains and I love engaging with them. It's cool, but I'm really here for the art. So if something else comes along in three or five years that's more sustainable for an artist to have their life as an artist, then I will happily switch to that and say, sorry, Avalanche, goodbye. <laughs> oh, wasn't that obedient? Yeah. <laughs> you called it chain agnostic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> I think that's a healthy way to kind of engage with anything, right? Like, I know what my priorities are. It's very simple. My priorities are art. <laughs> and yeah. so I will go where my priority is. And, and that's not to say that like, I want to live in a silo where I'm not engaged in, in this type of technology. I think that that's fascinating uh, for what it can offer artists. But 
yeah, I'm not really like one of these maxis who really loves one chain over the other. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think being maxi about anything is probably problematic. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Right, so let's talk more about the actual type of NFTs oh, that you've been releasing. So, is it, so do you only do one of ones, or I mostly do one of ones, um, and I don't actually know why I mostly do one of ones. I suppose I can make them into editions, but for me, it's kind of like um, I do these things that it's video art at the most basic level. But I start by making the sounds, and then. I kind of imagine, all right, what is a question that I'm asking right now? Or what, what pictures is this sound giving me? And then I'll either use like found footage, archival footage or uh, stock footage. And I'll kind of create this visual poem that is like a moving image of a question that I'm trying to ask. And for me, I've just never, I've never really seen the point in making like editions of them. <laughs> yeah. I prefer to just be like, look, this is one piece I made it. And maybe if I get to a point where a lot of people want the art, maybe I'll start to make editions and just be like, yeah, give me all your money. Give me all your money. <laughs> but for now, I pretty much have just done one of ones except um, I did, because my one of ones are priced at like a slightly higher price point for myself right now, obviously this is like pales in comparison to what <laughs> some of the artists are selling for oh, in the space. Yeah. But um, I've also released uh, a series of eggs called Una Eggs and I lay these eggs and um, I lay 28 eggs for every day of my cycle and then two eggs didn't get sold so I had to bought two eggs. It was quite a process <laughs> and that's the only kind of um yeah that's the only piece that i do that is uh, more than a one of one there were editions of the eggs because that's to me is like well if you have an egg then you know we're, we're committed to each other more or less yeah <laughs> i'm going to the eggs will hatch in nine months and i'll give people new art that takes on a oh, life wow. of its own and so it creates this kind of longevity relationship between someone who has that and someone who has you know um yeah, an interaction with me. I think that the idea that artists get to know their collectors or know the people who are interested in the work is like really, really something beautiful that's been born out of the NFT space. Um, but I don't really agree that artists have to have communities, which, my God, the amount of people who talk about community, it's like, you don't even know what that means, bro. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right, so um, of course, you know, we were mentioning how, how kind of new NFTs are. It's um, what would you say to, you know, artists who kind of want to enter but are a bit like, like that guy said before, they were, they're a bit scared. <laughs> yeah, look, that's rubbish. Like, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a computer, it's new technology. And I think that there's a lot of this like smart talking in NFT space and smart talking in blockchain. And it's like, the truism is, look, if it is, uh, if it's a simple concept that you understand, you can explain it to someone. So we don't need to bore people down with jargon or make them afraid of NFTs with new jargon or new technology. It's like, look, this technology is built actually for you as an artist, for me as an artist, and for other people all around the world engaging in whichever way they want to. So it's like, just don't be afraid of it. It's not smarter than you. It's not greater than you. It's just a new piece of technology. And I think that, um, yeah, like most people's hesitancy to it comes from a lack of experience with it. And once you try it out, you're like, oh, cool. I can literally make a photo of my dirty socks into an NFT. <laughs> How easy, like, what did you have for breakfast? Do you want to put that in an NFT? Great, you can do it. Yeah, a question of validity, who the f would care and why would that be important and why would you want that to have permanence is, is the more conceptual side of it. But you didn't even need to engage with the conceptual side of NFTs to really make one. So like. If there's an artist out there, if there's any resident or any hesitancy, apologies, you just get past that, mate. Just hop on in. It's, hop on it's, in. it's wide open. And like the more people that take up space here, the better. The, the queer community in NFT space is like marvelous and so kind and like really willing to engage with new artists. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, I just say, come around, hit me up, slide into the DMs. We'll get you, we'll get you sorted. It's like, it's fun. It's really fun. And it like, hopefully, is something that allows more artists to sustain themselves on a regular basis. Absolutely. So I'd love, love to know about how you, uh, so it says you were, Una was born, mm. right? In 2021, Yeah. right? November. Yes. November, yeah. So, so I'm a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a baby, complete baby. Yeah. So can you tell us about, you know, uh, the kind of meaning behind the birth of Una? Of course, of course. Um, so I decided, 
you know, let me look in the space. Let me kind of just <laughs> take a background seat and see what it's about. Let me let me learn more about the technology and what I'm actually doing and how I can contribute in in ways that feel validating to me, right? My practice is for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really for anyone else. Yeah, so exactly. I'm only going to do things that I like and when I like them. And NFT NYC was something that was presented to me as like, oh, it's like a festival, but for NFTs and everyone will be cool and nice. And there's a lot of this. And I was like, all right, well, f it. Let's just go see what it's like. And I decided that that would be a, an appropriate time for Una to be born. Um, so I created a Twitter and Instagram, all that shit right then. Went to the conference and it was quite beautiful. I saw my first Genesis piece. I met so many lovely artists and it really was quite an inspiring moment because you could tell that in the room there, there was so much potential. And when you think about birth as like, uh, you know, as a concept, my sister just gave birth. So I'm like really on this like, birth is incredible. <laughs> it's like, it's a moment of complete potential because you have something that is totally undefined, its future is unknown, and it's that, that Genesis moment, which is why like, I think that Genesis pieces are important, and this is why I have my Genesis piece Avalanche as like, something that's new and important because you can go any which way from there. And I really, really think that I've, I've been blessed up that like, <laughs> I've only had good things happen to me since I was born. We'll yeah. wait for some <laughs> things to happen because no one gets through their life landscape. But so far, Una's had a lot of joy and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of press in, a, in certain ways. Um, I had actually an interview with Bloomberg. Oh, amazing. They only included half a second of what I said. Oh, <laughs> that's quite funny. Bloomberg, but like, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get you more later, Bloom. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll <laughs> chat. But it's quite affirming, right? To be like, wow, there's, there's something that I'm doing right now, which is having both a visceral response and kind of a, a semi-intellectual response. And hopefully the art, really triggers that emotional response as well because that's where I think the, the most meaning is made um and I don't know that was a really roundabout way to answer like what my birth was but <laughs> I really liked it yeah. and now it's funny I'm going back this um yeah, I'm going back this summer to NFT NYC which will technically be my uh first birthday <laughs> which I'm really excited about and um I'm going to be a speaker so Amazing. it's quite a lovely evolution that I've been on so far Amazing, yeah. So, well, it's it's funny because you know you've just been born, essentially. True. But but what are your next steps for Una? <laughs> uh, it's a great question. I really like. I'd love to make it a bit more sustainable of a practice. Right now, <laughs> it's a little unsustainable. I wear high heels that are too painful on my feet for too long. And um, but they just look amazing, though. Come I, on. <laughs> like, <laughs> I actually, I love it. I get to work with so many incredible artists in terms of nail art, in terms of wig artists, in terms of fashion designers and other artists. Like, I absolutely love it. So Una will definitely be doing more collabs in the future. That's to be expected. I'm going to be a speaker at Miami NFT week actually next week, which is exciting. I have no oh idea what gosh. I'm going to say yet. <laughs> Nothing planned. <laughs> um, and then also I'm, I'm kind of creating uh, what I like to call an universe, which is basically just a realm where people can connect about art, about Una, really it's called an universe, it's obviously gonna be about me. Um, and I'm creating a gallery space, uh, which is going to be the next thing that I release. And really it's important to me because most of the gallery spaces that we have right now in the metaverse, are like every other gallery that's around. It's like, I don't want a gallery that isn't in real life to try and pretend to be like one that's in real life. I don't want these boring white walls. Mm -hmm. I don't want a square room. I want something that's far more expressive and kind of pushes the boundaries of, well, where is digital meeting physical? And how can we kind of like play with that? So that's what's next for Una, making an universe gallery, really more collabs and more talk. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a lot more art as well. Obviously. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're so excited to see what you come up with. So, Una, is there anything else you want to say? Yeah, this is my real voice. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> uh, yeah, she does it so well, does she not? <laughs> I don't know. I really feel like I went in and out of like rude to posh to rude to posh. I was kind of all over London in that one, but, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> the fun is to have fun. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, you could have had me fooled, honestly. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll go around the conference the rest of the day. Oh my God, yeah. Everyone <laughs> will be British. like, they'll be like, wait, weren't you just like 
telling me that you're from Miami two seconds ago. I'm like, don't worry about it. (laughs) Mind your business. (laughs) Thank you so much for watching this episode. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to give us a like, comment and subscribe. So thank you so much, Una, for taking the time out to have a chat with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Had a good time. Hope you guys did too. Thank you. Bye.